Forrest has been in the health and wellness industry for 11 years. He obtained his Bachelor's in Nutritional Science in 2008 and he is a member of the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. He's a certified nutritionist, personal trainer, and corrective exercise therapist, which we all could use on our spots. Just kidding. He's <laughs> <laughs> in working with overweight individuals who suffer from diabetes and hormone instability. Richard appears regularly on Fox 10 Arizona Morning Show as a fitness and nutrition expert and has worked with the ABC, ABC show Extreme Weight Loss since 2010. <laughs> Richard is the co-founder of the POW Metabolic Transformation Program in 2008 and has since expanded into six successful wellness centers throughout the valley. In 2012, he co-founded the Be Your Best Program where he and his team work to transform lives of millions. Richard has been married to his beautiful wife, Heather, for 10 years and is a father of three wonderful children. Girls? Richard? All girls? Uh, actually, two boys and a girl. Okay, two boys and a girl. Actually, His mission in life is to help others and realize take action on their greatest potential with their health and wealth. Richard Morris. Thank you. Woo! What's the Still Healthy program? Well, we have to be healthy and eat right. Okay, is it working for you guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay, what results and what uh, benefits have you guys noticed from it so far? Say it again? <laughs> so you're eating healthier than you were before the, health, the Still Healthy started? That's awesome. What else? Conscious about exercise. So you're conscious about it. Are you doing it now? OK, that's good. <laughs> what? Oh, OK. That, that uh, really makes a big impact. Huh? Incentive. OK, free education. That's great. So what education have you guys gotten so far? What kind of stuff has been spilled out? Okay, that's great. So you guys have learned how to reduce your stress? Mm -hmm. Have you been applying those things? Okay, that's good. Okay, so stress management, what else? Great. So the, has there been anybody here to talk about nutrition or exercise besides the, the vegan or the vegetarian lifestyle? What, do, what have you guys had for exercise? Okay, that's convenient, right? Yeah. That one's beautiful as well. Yeah. 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 Um, we had a seminar yesterday on psychiatry and yoga. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Great. I know. This is an awesome. So when does this wrap up? It's each year we have mm -hmm. so many seminars, and if they oh. attend four, they get a reduction in their premium and do some other things. Okay, so who's in it for the premium deal? <laughs> yes, we need some incentive, right? This is cool. This is awesome. All right. So I have a question for you guys. <laughs> Late hand. <laughs> no, I'm for my health. Oh, for your health. There you go. <laughs> All right. So a question for you guys, just to kind of get rolling here. Um, how many of you have uh, been on a health program before, besides this one here, just by show of hands? Like something to try to improve your health. So like three of you guys? This is the first. Okay, some more hands are starting to trickle up. Okay, boom, 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 there we go. So for those of you who have done a program before, whether it's weight loss or, or something along those lines, um, how many of you actually notice benefit from doing it? Okay, you got healthier, maybe more energy. What were some of the benefits you noticed when you did this program, or whatever it was? Slept better. Okay, you slept better at night. Mm -hmm. Who's noticed that benefit when you start eating healthier, living a healthier lifestyle? It's pretty awesome how that works. What else? So better sleep. More productive at work. That's good. What else? Weight loss. More energy. More energy. So some pretty good benefits. Who wouldn't want these things, right? These are all really, really good things. Um, now, have you kind of trickled back by any chance to your old ways? And maybe the sleep's not as good anymore after that. Uh, maybe the energy's not as good. Maybe the weight kind of comes back on that we were trying to lose. So why is that? Why don't we just stick with it if we notice all those awesome benefits? Changing our habits. Changing our habits? Mm -hmm. And what's going on with our habits? Why are those so hard to change? Because oh, if they're... Higher. Conscious effort. <laughs> conscious effort. <laughs> Life is just crazy. Yeah. Let's go. Bring them up. Bring them up. Let's talk about them. This is a real deal here. More Let's get them all out. What's that? Preparation and planning. Preparation, planning. 
once you once you achieve those goals, you feel like you don't have to keep working on them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So wouldn't that be there. cool if like you could get to where you want to be energy wise, weight wise, and just take a pill and you're there? <laughs> it's good. Wouldn't everybody on this planet be fit, right? Yeah. <laughs> it takes a little more than that, though, of course. So what else? So time, energy, changing habits. What else? It wasn't sustainable. It's it's not sustainable. Let's let's get a little more specific there. Why isn't it sustainable? Okay. It's, not practical, it's, inconvenient. it's inconvenient, right? Aging. Aging. So, what comes along with aging? Yeah. Oh, the hormones change a little bit. You guys notice that by any chance? <laughs> okay. Injury might occur, right, with age. Oh, that's right. It's there. Yeah. That can be a big impact. Have you guys ever noticed that one? Wow. Where you're in it, but your partner's not in it, and so they win the battle uh -huh. over time. <laughs> it's too much resistance, maybe. Yeah, that's a rough one. I've been there myself. OK, what else? So these are some pretty good, what, that you're giving me? Variables, excuses, reasons. They're good something, right? And they're so good in fact, right? They're so darn good, these reasons, that what? They work. They win. They win. They work. Awesome, right? But if what we want exceeds the desire to change, then what typically happens? Or not the desire to change. So if what we want exceeds the, 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 um, the requirement to change, right? To take the steps forward, to take action, what typically happens? No change. OK. Why? Why, 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 why? We're lazy. Humans are lazy by nature. OK. We give to others and not to ourselves. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Undisciplined. OK. Undisciplined, we're lazy, we give to others, not ourselves. Why? Well, tell us. That's why we're here. <laughs> I don't have the answers. You think, okay, so if I spit out my three rules of thumb, and you guys now have the magic potion to live a healthy lifestyle, then what's going to happen? Why? Too many things on our plate, right? We don't make ourselves a priority. We don't make ourselves a priority. Do you guys notice we're starting to get a little deeper here? Okay, let's keep going. Because if we just do a little fluffy presentation, what's going to happen? And I give you some good information. So we're going to keep digging until we get to the bones, right? We're like archaeologists in here. Okay, why else? Why if we have all this information, we know the benefit of living a healthy lifestyle, we're even motivated, do we typically kind of go back? Comfortable. Yeah. It's how we were raised. That's Is that getting pretty deep right there? Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. What's your name? Stacy. Stacy. So tell me about that. What do you mean when you say that's how we were raised? Well, my mom, she worked and she had a couple kids at home, and we were kids that came up to change life, so she'd already raised a family and then us, and so she, I think mean, she was tired. Okay. And so she'd do real good and um, cook nutritional meals and exercise and keep her weight down and make sure we were eating correct and then she'd just get tired and then it would be back to the time of her and laying on the couch watching TV and so that's like a pattern that I saw my whole life to speak speak good but don't follow through so like procrastination type and I my brother used to say our parents we become and as mm. I hit my 40s I started making that connection that my mom I become and then when I hit 50 it was like oh, my mom I am and she's in the other room had five strokes is blind has diabetes and I'm thinking do I want to be that whoa that's yeah so I've lost 100 pounds this year so far <laughs> Wow. 
lifestyle change for you. The way okay. our clinic has to change. Does that make sense? Oh. The core yeah. of me and how I associate food, nutrition, comfort, because that's where a lot of the food comes from, and in with why I do the things I do, why I eat the way I do, why I don't put myself first. Okay. It's been a whole. It's not just been I changed my way of eating and my exercising. It's been a whole. Why going to counseling to figure out what motivates me and why I'm not motivated. So you have dug in. You have dug in. You have dug digging. pretty darn deep. I'm still digging. And you're still digging. Mm -hmm. And do you notice any end in sight with all that digging you're doing? No, it's a lifetime journey. <laughs> oh, darn it. <laughs> it's a lifetime wow. journey. So you said it was Stacy, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you lost 100 pounds. 100 pounds. And here you are today. And are you, do you feel like you're where you want to be with your health, your physical health, or do you have more to um, go? It kind of goes in ways like, um, you know, of course my pre-diabetic stabilized and I, I don't have that anymore. And okay. my cholesterol went down to normal. And um, for a while I had really good mental clarity and the brain fog lifted. And then, although I haven't gone back to my old way of eating, I find that I eat less vegetables. Does that make sense? Because you're busy and you're tired. Yeah, you yeah. Have a, you know, high and they, they don't taste as good either. Yogurt. Right? <laughs> yeah, and I'm going, so why am I eating this? Because, like, I can't see everything's blurry. That tells me that I need to incorporate some other vegetables into my diet and keep them there. So it's just a journey that I've been going through. But um, I find that when I'm dealing with all the emotional, mental reasons of why I eat or have the lifestyle that I do, then I find that I need to work through a lot of stuff and then I don't sleep well while I'm doing all that. Okay. Does that so, make sense? yeah, let me ask so you. So then I have to incorporate my, my nutritionist said you need to incorporate some little higher um, caliber exercising in that, and that will help reduce the uh, lack of sleep and the worry and all that, and that has helped. Okay. So, l let me ask you a question, Stacey. Um, you go back to your mom, right? Growing up and how that lifestyle was. Did you guys hear how Stacey explained her lifestyle? Just out of curiosity, who here had maybe a little of a similar um, upbringing where it wasn't as healthy, mom was busy, and so you kind of got whatever food was there. And it maybe was hamburger helper, or macaroni and cheese, or whatever. It wasn't a nutritious meal. So we have, it looks like about half the room who might have been in that, that kind of, of a habit. So these are some really great points you bring up. And yours maybe seem a little more extreme than what mine may have been, or maybe a little more intense you know, with your mom's health situation now than some other people. But it's a great example of what we can look to, and you got really deep. And that's what it boils down to, is like what's going on up here, not just physically. Um, you guys have a little flyer in front of you, it says best, right? Um, so being in the health industry for a little over 10 years now, um, I got so darn frustrated about three or four years ago because I felt like I had some really powerful tools. Um, I even work on this uh, weight loss show, right, where we help people transform two, 300 pounds over the course of a year. And yeah, some of them keep their weight off, but what happens to the majority of them? They gain it back. So how does that feel to them? Bad, right? It stinks. How does that feel to someone who's helping them and supporting them and loving them along the way? Almost more frustrating for me, I felt sometimes, than it is for them. And not saying that I'm better, I have a better reason to be frustrated than they do, but by golly, we had to figure out a way to target all aspects of wellness because all that we as a population focus on for the most part when it comes time to getting healthy is what? Weight. Exercise and diet. diet nutrition. We might throw some stress management in there. We might throw some info about sleep in there, some mental emotional health. But it's so much deeper than exercise and nutrition. If it wasn't deeper than that, then 95% of people who lose weight and gain it back wouldn't be a statistic, right? So we've got to figure out some other issues. So here's what we've come to. The body's important. We have got to exercise and eat healthy, right? How many of us are in agreement with that? Just out of curiosity. Raise your hand high. So I know if you agree that it's important to, ex to exercise and eat healthy. Okay, so 100% of people. That probably spreads throughout the whole world, right? It's a pretty common awareness. Now, 80% of people in this country are overweight. 60% are clinically obese, and so on and so on. We can rattle off statistic after statistic. So we gotta exercise and eat healthy. And then there's a component that Stacy brought up called an emotional component, the mental emotional all in kind of one wrap. So uh, BEST is an acronym, stands for body, 
and emotional health. And then how many of you have, you mentioned back there, your counterpart or your partner isn't supportive maybe? Or, or you know someone whose yeah. counterpart or partner isn't supportive. Um, so if someone in your life who normally is a support for you or you're around a lot, if they're not supportive, what typically happens over time with our health goals? They fade, right? But if we have our, our partner or friends, a group of friends who know what we're going for and they're there to support us, maybe it's a nutritionist, a personal trainer, a life coach, or just a, a husband, a wife, whatever, a boyfriend, girlfriend, children, if they're there and they're supporting you and they're following up with you day after day after day, what typically happens? They get on your nerves, okay? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so that's a sacrifice we have to make for what? Being successful. Being successful. And that goes for any area of life, right? If we have someone to support us, one or a mastermind of people, maybe 10 or whatever the case is, we're typically more successful. And that's what true transformation is all about. Focusing on the body, but not leaving out those two more crucial components, the emotional side and getting the right support. So we developed the best program um, with those philosophies in mind. You guys see Chris and Heidi Powell. I don't know if you guys know them. They're um, the, the celebrities on Extreme Weight Loss. And they've teamed up with us with this best program. It's a foundation. It's free. Um, we're an official nonprofit foundation. And we are looking to empower the world, literally the world, millions and millions of people. And what's really cool is AT still is where it all started. This is it right here in this room and the other room over there. <laughs> this, is, this is where we've start, started this. We've been going for a year and a half now. And we encourage you to come and to bring your significant others, your support group, people who you want to reach out and help. And we do classes on an every other week basis. And, and we try to do our best to empower people. And when you have that support group of like-minded people along the journey with you, I promise you the road will be a lot easier for you. It may get on your nerves sometimes, right? <laughs> facts, but you're more likely to accomplish these benefits and maintain them for life. That's what true transformation is. We talk about change versus transformation. Change means what? We might change. We might be different for a little bit, but what might happen? <laughs> Go back. Transformation is inventing a new possibility for who we are. All these stories that you guys share with me, we'll call them stories instead of reasons and excuses because they're stories, right? We've created them. We've we are the writer, director, the author, the actor of our own stories. And if life's too busy, or if it's too stressful, or if it's too hard, or my significant other isn't there to support me, or it's too extreme, or whatever the case is, what is that? Sabotage. It's, it's just a sabotaging story we created. No one else told us that story. We came up with it, and we're living that story every day, right? So let's change the story of what tra transformation, changing your body, and achieving these goals is all about for you. Um, and I, I know I can sit here and get mushy with you guys for the next 40 minutes, um, but I'm going to give you some key principles that I feel are really important to abide by when it comes time to um, exercise and nutrition. I see some extremely healthy food in here today. And this is great. I see some quinoa. Is that quinoa in there? Rock and roll. That's one of the most high. Uh, what is it called? High fibrous protein foods on the planet. It's phenomenal. I love quinoa. You guys like quinoa? Who hasn't tried it? Who hasn't tried quinoa? Okay. So you're going to try it today. Okay. You're going to go to Sprouts after work. Sprouts is right here. It's a mile away, right? And you're going to get some quinoa and try it. Quinoa. Q U I O N A. Quinoa. Quinoa. Ah, try it out. It's awesome. Yeah, you can throw it. You just, just like rice. Yeah, you can throw it on a salad, right? You can mix it in with some chicken. It's one of the best carbohydrates on the planet. Yeah. So that's cool. You take that and start doing that a couple times a week, and you're automatically a healthier person. So we're going to talk a little bit more. Thanks for bringing your quinoa. <laughs> oh, wow. 30 days? OK. I did, thir I did um, vegan veganism one time. I went for 30 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm thinking about trying it again, though. I might make it to 45. <laughs> but you know what? I really respect veganism. That's a super, I mean, talk about a healthy colon. Yeah. Okay. 
So you see up here, uh, nutritional three rules of thumb. Any, any questions or comments that people want to add, by the way, right now, before I get into a few rules of thumb? Actually, you know what? Let's stand up for a second. Everybody get up. So who wants to lead us? <laughs> now, you guys are all sloping down, so this might be a little bit of a challenge. But what we're going to do is I'm going to have you stand in front of your desk, and we're going to do some squats right now. Because what happens, okay, hold on a sec. You, hold on. I know, that, I know that there might be some knee issues in here, some back issues. There's things that might prevent us from doing this. I want you just to hold your desk. If you can't do the repetition squats, just go down and hold it. I just want you to fill your muscles for a little bit, okay? You guys want to do that for a few? Okay, so hold on to your desk. Hold on right here. And I want you to come down and hold your desk. You're not going to fall forward. And then come back up. Let's do like 50 squats right now. Everybody go. I'm going I'm to do it with you. Let's go. Come on. There we go. Are you pregnant? <laughs> yeah, you carry all your weight in your belly. <laughs> I thought that was a guy thing. <laughs> okay. So who's counting? 11, 12. Now, if you can't move up and down, just go and hold it. Do you like hold instead of, instead of doing that? Because it might hurt your joints to move up and down, okay? Yeah. Who feels their muscles right now, just out of curiosity? You feel your muscles moving? Whose heart rate's increasing, just out of curiosity? Okay, whose endorphins are releasing at a more rapid rate now, just out of curiosity? Okay, whose blood's flowing? Whose heart's getting stronger? <laughs> Where are we at? 39. Holy cow, really, I thought we were about done. 30, okay. Why not just keep going? Let's do 100. You guys want to do 100 instead of 50? I say, let's go. <laughs> We're moving. Okay, remember, if you can't move, just squat down and hold the desk until you feel that static burn in your quads. Say, where are we at? Seriously, now. Woo! Okay. <laughs> okay. 48. 49. 50. Woo! Oh, okay, who's feeling like, shoot, I'm sweating now. I, okay, now here's the deal. I, I did bring a community deodorant in my bag. It's unisex, so we're all right. <laughs> okay, whose heart rate's up again, just out of curiosity? How long did that take? Minute two tops, right? Who feels a little better right now? I mean, obviously we're sweating, we're warm, but who feels better about themselves right now? Okay, maybe half of us, some of us aren't sure. Some of us are playing the mind game going, I don't know if I feel better about myself, maybe I do. I don't know if I want to raise my hand. Okay, but what just happened physiologically? I feel my blood pumping. Blood pumping, what else? More oxygen. More oxygen, what else? Everybody got happier, how's that? Cortisol. Endorphins, a little chemical hormone, right, relief, huh? <laughs> Laughing at ourselves, whatever, right? We do the trick. Okay? You still feel your muscles? Okay? Quads? Some of the biggest muscles in the body right here, right? So for some of you, who, who was, who's, um, let me see how to word this. For the, who was the, um, <laughs> who, what was the first time you felt that? That burn like that? Ever? Mm -hmm. Ever? Okay. It's been a while. <laughs> that was the first time. Yeah. Whose first workout was that for the day? For today, yeah. For today. Raise your hand. I'm just curious. Who was Yes, just for today. Yeah. Did you guys normally work out after work? Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Okay. And now this is a healthy room, so I don't need to really motivate anybody because everybody who's here is already motivated. Right? So my work's like done. We were just having a little fun there. But there were so many physiological benefits to that. And then there were some emotional, mental benefits to that. Just knowing that I can go throughout my day, even though it was one to two minutes, I've exercised. I've done something for my body that feels good. And you guys probably already all feel like that because you're here. And you've been coming here for a while. So this is awesome. So I'm going to get into a few points about nutrition. And I want this to be an open discussion. Ask questions. If I'm moving too fast, let me know. But I feel like I've made this as simple and tight niche as we can possibly make the three crucial keys to living a healthy life in regards to nutrition. Okay, so let's dig into this. 
So three rules of thumb, I call them. And by the way, for those of you who want this presentation, um, I believe I have, um, I'll give you my email address at the end, and I'll email it out to everybody. Okay, so don't worry about taking notes and making sure everything's on the slide. And the, yeah, my, you can go to our website too and request it. And you can also come to our, we're gonna do our first best class on April 8th, so next Tuesday, right here in this room, and Chris and Heidi will be here, for those of you who wanna meet them and, and all that good stuff. So they, they will be here and give some powerful points. This one, right? Oh, for the rest of the classes. Oh, for this. Oh, um, can we change that? Yeah. We're going right here. We'll pay for it. We'll pay for this room. Yeah. Sorry, Jim. My bad. Okay, here we go. Yeah, 6.30 to 8.30 right here. Yeah, now I'll probably go a little longer than that because people who want to take pictures afterward and all that kind of stuff. So just put on that if that's something you'd like to do. Make a reservation at the first one that's there. You know what? Um, I would like, what the best idea for you would be to be right in the front row before <laughs> class starts. This room will fill up on Tuesday night, so please be here early if you want to see, okay? Because we might have to have people standing out the doors because this room has a capacity that we have to abide by fire code wise, right? <laughs> right, both rooms, yeah. 200, this, yeah. Okay, rule number one. Should I, should I change, it, change it from rules to suggestions? Or we like rules? Okay, rule. Rule number one. And can someone keep me on time-wise? As you can tell, I don't really have a script. I have 20 minutes left. Let's do it. Okay, rule number one. Hydration. So how much water do we drink? A gallon, two liters. 50% Okay, got it. That's it. Why? Why do we drink water? Okay, what are the benefits? Okay, obviously, real quick, a uh, couple things that people forget, and I've had this happen with a lot of my um, patients that I've worked with, but we're not gonna count tea, coffee, soda as fluid. So it's, it's like, hey, I had 64 ounces of water today, and I had 64 ounces of um, Pepsi, so I had a, my gallon today, right? So I'm good. <laughs> That's not the case, right? We need, it needs to be clear, clear, purified water. And we can put lemon in it and little flavorings in it. That's great. But we're going to count water as it is, water. We can flavor it as we wish. Okay. Um, so it's right. A half, half an ounce of water for every pound of body weight. So um, if I weigh 200 pounds, I'll drink 100 ounces of water a day. This is bare, bare, bare minimum. And I want to get into the reasons why here. Let me get to my next slide. Let's see here. Okay, here it is. I'm going to stand in the back of the room for a second because I don't want to turn around like this. How are you guys doing? You all right? <laughs> Feel better? Yes. Okay, this is good, right, Sonia? Yes, great. Are you glad you invited me? I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> I want to come back and hang out with you guys. I have lots of cool presentations. All right, so someone mentioned, what was, what was it you mentioned about water? Someone, someone threw a health benefit. Okay, cleanses, someone said cleanses, okay. So that's called, a, we'll call it detoxing, okay? So in addition, I call them the four Asians of water. I think it's really helpful for everybody to understand the benefits. So hydration, and then there's lubrication, so we lubricate our joints, and it helps to also lubricate fat, fat cells, and when those are lubricated, they're able to leave the body more effectively. And then we have oxygenation, which isn't, I don't know if that's a word, but we're oxygenating the body. Have you guys ever been up at like a high altitude? And you get what? You get dehydrated, what else happens? Bad headache, right? Why? You're not getting oxygen. So that's what water is, it's oxygen, right? So we're gonna oxygenate the body. So you're always told when you're at a high altitude, drink more water, you get more oxygen. Okay, even though we're not at a high altitude, drink plenty of water, at least half your body weight in ounces. If you exercise, a typical hour-long workout requires an extra 32 ounces of water, okay? So I would challenge you guys to drink half your body weight, and if you work out, plus 32. And you will notice some great benefits to that. Helps to flush out sodium and uh, keep the body balanced. Mental clarity, so many benefits to water. Do I need to go off on this more, is this good? So is everybody in here 100% absolutely committed to drinking more water? Yes. Okay. Whoever did their fitness assessment this week got a brand new water bottle. Okay. So, and what's the best part about drinking water? 
Besides, you get to get up from your desk every hour. It is. Right? <laughs> Virtually free. Does it, do you guys get free water here at AT still? We do. OK. There we go. No calories? Huh? Oh, it's right here. Detoxification. So that's the cleansing. Mm -hmm. Balance blood sugar, mental clarity, increase metabolism, and increase energy. OK, let's do it, you guys. Number one call to action. So if I see you guys again, if I see you at the best class on, Monday, on Tuesday night, I'm going to ask you who's been doing this. And hopefully everybody here raises their hand. Who can come to the best class on Tuesday? I'm just curious. Two? OK. Sorry if I have sweaty armpits. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous if you guys haven't been able to tell. OK, next rule of thumb, eat every three hours. Who already does this? OK, more than half. That's great. OK, what's, what's maybe a concern about eating every three hours? Why is it hard? What's the story? It's inconvenient. It's inconvenient. <laughs> Too many calories, right? Yeah, we can't eat that many calories every three hours. OK. So here's how it works. We have um, certain blood sugar levels in our body, right? And then we have all these different hormones. Some of them are called insulin, uh, cortisol, and there's a few others that I'll talk about. But for right now, let's just focus on those two. So after the three-hour mark, so number one, we want to eat within 30 minutes of waking up. After the three-hour mark, our blood sugar will drop. Okay, no matter what we ate three hours ago, our blood sugar will go down. And when it's down, cortisol and insulin are stimulated. Cortisol, you guys know what cortisol is? Or somebody knows, what is it? It's fat? <laughs> Okay. It, it can increase fat, for sure, right, if there's too much of it in the body? Stress hormone. Yeah, stress hormone. Stress a lot of it call, hormone. people call it a fat hormone. Yeah. yeah. So when our body is stressed because our blood sugar is low, whether we consciously know it or not, cortisol releases, along with blood sugar dropping. And so when this happens, what, of course, are we going to do? We might suffer for a while, right? And after we've suffered long enough, we are going to eat, eat, eat eventually. And what kind of food do we want? What's that? We crave bad stuff. Okay. And it's. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. So, have you ever just like gone home from work and spent seven, eight hours? You just rip the fridge open, whatever's in there, it doesn't matter. It's just you're going to eat it. Yeah. And you know what's crazy about that is quite literally, we don't even have control of ourselves at that point. What is taking control? What? Cortisol. Cortisol, our blood sugar. We don't. It's like an elephant versus the rider, right? If an elephant really wanted to, you Knock that rider right off. And so it's like we're trying to control this massive animal that truly has all power over us. And we've all felt that before. And I don't care that it's important to eat veggies and protein. We don't want veggies and protein right here. We just don't. So we normally cave at this point okay, with whatever it was. And what does that bring up? Blood sugar. And guess what's going to happen? Because our body's stressed at this point. We are forced to release excessive amounts of insulin, so much so that we don't need that much, but our body just wants to keep us alive, so it releases so much. What happens to the leftovers that we don't use? It's stored. It's stored as fat. This is how, why it's easy to, to spot a diabetic who's taking too much insulin, insulin from 100 yards away, because it's just an inner tube right here. Okay? It goes back to my theory, it's trying to go back home, and it can't, so it just hangs out in the gut. So, Insulin is excessive, and that's going to store his body fat. Cortisol increases because we're stressed. So there's more cortisol at this point, and we're in trouble. So when we have that much of a spike, we have so much of these hormones releasing, it's going to pull our blood sugar down aggressively again, right? And so where do we find ourselves once again? Right back to where we were. But now it's even more aggressive. And this roller coaster, this vicious cycle, as we call it, is more and more intense every day. And it's almost impossible to break off of it. Almost impossible. So we solve this by just making sure we eat every three hours. I'm going to give you a quick example here. Okay, um, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into that, back over to that point in just a little bit. But every time we eat, we have to have a protein. So what is your name? Amanda. Amanda. So she had quinoa, which is a protein and a carbohydrate with her vegetable. So that's perfect. Okay. So we will eat a protein. What, right when we are about to dip, we'll have that carb plus that protein, right? And then we get a little bit of a spike, just a little bit, 
It's not going to take us sky high like that other food did, but we get it feel, feel pretty good for about an hour or so after we eat. And then after about three hours, the same thing happens, and we just need to make sure we have a protein every single time we eat. If you have a carbohydrate by itself, let me see here, I might be, there's something, we've got to have our water. Oh, got to go back. Okay. I took one of my slides out of here in an accident, so I'm just going to do a demonstration for you guys. So let's just say that um, you have a carb by itself, even like a bowl of oatmeal, because oatmeal is what? Is that healthy or unhealthy? Healthy. It's healthy. How about fruit? Healthy or unhealthy? Healthy. Okay. Right? So is fruit a carbohydrate, though? Yes. It is. Right? So if I have a carbohydrate, whether it's a healthy one like a fruit or a vegetable, or it's an unhealthy one like a cookie or a donut, my blood sugar is going to go up. Now, obviously, it's going to go up faster. It's going to spike more aggressively if I eat what? The refined sugar, the cookie. Okay? But the bottom line is, every time I eat a carb, my blood sugar goes up. Now, if I have a protein with that, and heaven forbid you ever eat a cookie again in your life, right, or have a donut or the burger, but whatever the case is, we just need to make sure we have a protein with it, and that acts as a ceiling. My um, slide that I have for this is better than my hand demonstration here, <laughs> but uh, I, I forgot to put it in today's presentation. So we have a protein every time, and that acts as like a buffer or a ceiling for that blood sugar spike that we would have had. So again, going back to your meal, the quinoa is perfect because you get all the nutrients in there plus all the extra fiber. So we want to always have the protein with the carb. Never, ever, ever. Even eat an apple by itself. Even if you have to have just a little spoonful of Greek yogurt or a little bit of quinoa on the side or something. There's other proteins. There's animal proteins, which, again, you're staying away from right now. But I'm okay with them as long as we don't eat them excessively. We just have to have a protein every time we eat. So our nuts protein. They are, right? So we can even have, if we're going to have an apple, we need to have about eight almonds or eight nuts. My, my rule with nuts is eight is great. Always have eight. Okay, you don't need more because they're so dense and high in, in calories and fat that eight is great. And it may seem like, are you kidding me? Eight nuts? I can have that in one, one handful, right? Yeah, I can eat 30 right now. But guess what? If, if you, let me ask you, if you're, if you're drinking your water, Right? and you're eating every three hours, and you're having a protein every time you eat, do you really want more than eight? No. It's not. You don't really need that. No, so another question I have is portion control. Okay, how much do I eat? How many of this? And I always just cut the line off with nuts at eight is great. Okay, if you're a guy, you're a little bigger, you're working out, maybe have a dozen or something like that. But you just don't need a lot because they're so high in calories and dense with all that fat. Good fat, of course, but we just don't want too much of it. So portion control. This is the last kind of point that I want to talk about. What's my time, Tanya? You got 15 minutes. Oh. Yeah, oh, wow, wow, wow. OK, I was speaking fast, thinking I was wrapping up in like one minute here. OK. Well, if we want to do questions, you have to You guys want to do some squats? I'm just kidding. <laughs> OK, I'll, I'll slow down. I'll slow down here. I need to put the brakes on. I'll put the brakes on here. <laughs> so um, portion control. Here's my answer, because everybody's, that's like the number one question. Who has a question about portion control? How much should, how much should you eat? No one, no one cares. Okay, I won't even get into it then. Well, I do. We'll move I on. Yeah. Oh, was there one? Yes. I have a question. Uh-huh. Um, so peanut butter. Uh-huh. I eat one of those a lot. And that goes good with apples. Yeah. That goes really good. Uh-huh. So it says two tablespoons. Uh -huh. have, like, way too much peanut butter. I would do a tablespoon. If you're eating one, butters, okay. do a tablespoon at a time. By the way, Why who... they put two on there? <laughs> and they want you to eat it, so you go back and buy more. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that way you go, oh, I should have two servings. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> Yeah, so one tablespoon is typically a good serving. Um, it's darn near equivalent of what eight nuts would be, or eight okay. seeds. Right, have you guys ever tried sunflower seed butter? Mm -hmm. You have? OK, I hardly ever hear that. Is it good? Oh, oh good. my god. Good. Almond butter is better. Um, almonds and, um, and uh, let's see, almonds, walnuts, and pecans are the best <clears throat> nuts to have. Um, peanuts are a little bit higher in the wrong type of fat. And there's some fungus properties in there which aren't that great for the body. So um, peanuts, I would switch them out with <laughs> almonds, walnuts, and pecans. And then um, sunflower seed butter. If you haven't tried it, who hasn't tried it here? Just out of curiosity. Okay. So who lives by Trader Joe's? Okay. So tonight, I'm going to call the action. Here we go. Tonight, you're going to go by Trader Joe's, go in there, and get sunflower seed butter. And then, yes, and the quinoa. And I'm almost positive my ears will be burning this evening <laughs> as you consume that, okay? So you guys gonna do that?
Right, so we've got you taking action on quinoa and sunflower seed butter and shifting the peanuts to almonds, walnuts, and pecans. Okay, so here's how you know portion sizes. Because I'm, you, were you the only one curious about portion sizes? Okay, we're just going to have a talk over here. Oh, this is a portion size? Yeah, if you haven't eaten all day. Yeah, that's great. Uh, never eat. Oh, oh, oh. I thought you meant a portion size of nuts. I'm like, yeah, if you haven't eaten all day. Yeah. Okay, here we go. You guys ready for this? So she said you should never eat more than you can put in two hands. So do you have anybody else's curiosity or should I just keep talking to these guys? Okay, cool. I'll move. Sorry. We'll, we'll do a one-on-one -on -one later if you want to set it up. I'm, I'm happy. And we'll even do it for free, me and you. <laughs> okay, so um, never eat more than in your hands. So what we'll do is we'll hold, everybody hold up a fist. Okay, look at your fist. Okay, how does that look? Okay, remember, cut off at the wrist. Okay, this is how much carbohydrates you can have three times a day. This is your carbohydrate portion. And if you're eating five times a day, which you should, you might have to shave a little bit of that off for your snacks, right? So three carbohydrate portions this size a day, or you can do six half this size a day. That's typical, right? But when we have our spaghetti at night, right? How many of fists do we have in there? It's like, hold on, can I borrow your fist real quick? Put it up next to my, <laughs> that looks more like it, right? <laughs> Yeah, so that includes fruit as well. Yeah, so this would be like an apple, right? So an apple would be a serving of carbohydrates. Yeah, so you can have three of those servings a day. Um, and you can have more than that, obviously. But if we have our protein with it, and we're having our healthy fat, and we're eating every three hours, you will feel fulfilled. Now here's, because that's just so general. That's just very, very, very broad. So let's talk more specifically about your body, because everybody in here is different. I guarantee that your metabolism is different than yours and so on and so on and so on. We all have different metabolic rates and the way that our body breaks down carbs and proteins. Some of us are more carb sensitive. We eat a carb and we blow. Whatever the case is, everybody's different. Okay, so a lot of this is trial and error and I don't know everybody's individual body and you probably barely know your own. So here's the thing with um, portions. We can do this for the, pro uh, the carb. Protein is a s the size of your hand, right? Thickness and size of the palm of your hand. It's about the size of a deck of cards, typically. That could change though. Everybody's a little different, but if you're doing that every three hours throughout the day, that will fulfill you. People are like, no way, I eat that much in a, in a meal times five. That's because maybe you're eating once or twice a day. And, and so we just got to remember that whole portion control. So if you eat, here's the rule for you. If you eat a, a meal or a snack and you are hungry within an hour or two after that, you're like really, really hungry, what does that mean? You probably didn't have enough protein there or enough food in general. Or you might not be drinking enough water. There's one of the rules of thumb that you're not quite following. Or maybe it's really just not enough substance, enough food for you. So you just need a little bit more. So you'll trial and error. Now if you eat and it's been like three, four, five hours and you're just like, I'm still full, what's going on? What does that mean? Probably ate too much. All fist size, palm aside. And by the way, the fat is your thumb right here. So that's, I could probably shove about eight almonds in my thumb. That's how much we have at a meal, at a serving, or a snack. Okay, we just don't need more than that. And unless, again, you find that you're, as you're doing this whole thing and you notice you're starving after an hour, you might need more. Now, how many of you guys have, have started a, a nutrition plan and at first it's like, I'm too full to eat. I can't eat every three hours. But all of a sudden you start doing it and after two weeks, you're ravenous after two. What does that mean? Your metabolism's going up. This is a good thing. If you start sweating at night, if your body's warm, these are good signs that your metabolism is boosting. That's what we want. So those are great benefits, side benefits. Look at them however you want them. Tanya. Five minutes. Five minutes, thank you. Okay, so <laughs> wrapping it up now. So there we go. Three rules of thumb review. Let's review them. So half your body weight in water, right? And then we have eat every three hours and then eat a protein with your carbs. And even if you don't have carbs, still have a protein. You just can't have carbs what? Alone. Alone. Thank you. You guys learned something. They actually probably already knew that. How do you guys feel? You all right? OK. So I know I have a question. I know they're all carbs. Yes. Is this much broccoli the same as? Good question. OK. So um, 
this is, this is the um, answer to that. Um, vegetables are free. Free, 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 free. Now, the amount of butter and salt you put on them is not free, right? But raw veggies or even a little slightly cooked, they are 100% free. And in fact, I suggest two fistfuls of veggies at every single meal. Yeah, it's a lot. But what's going to happen if we eat all those veggies? You're good, right? Yeah, and there's so much fiber in veggies that it's, they don't spike the blood sugar. Right. The only veggies that will spike the blood sugar are carrots and peas, right? Corn isn't a veggie, so, and even peas are a legume. Yeah. Um, so really carrots are the only ones that are going to spike it. Yes? Somebody had said something about cauliflower being in that group too. Is it also high in sugar? No. I didn't think so. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, questions. We have a few more minutes. Ask away. Yes? Yeah, winter squash. Yeah, so squ that's another one too. Winter squash, that one is a little more starchy. Yeah. What's? I'm sorry. Winter squashes are okay. Summer squashes are the ones that are starchy. See, so an orange, a yellow. Uh huh. Uh huh. I guess I don't know what a yellow is. Oh, corn or potato would be a yellow. Yeah, and that has some truth behind it because when you have the greens with it, it has extra fiber, which will help control that starch. Yeah, so there's a huge benefit to having the veggie. That balances blood sugar for sure. Yeah, I like it. I like your mom. Okay, um, I know we're, we're just a little low on time here, but I'm, I'm here to answer any more questions yeah, that you guys I, have. I just have an observation here. Yeah. This is a single serving raw almonds from Trader Joe's. Uh -huh. like I believe there's more than eight in there. Yeah, so divide that in half. There's probably 16 four. or more. I think yeah. there's four. Well, that's part that's of that. That's kind of like the two is it really? spoons yeah. of peanut butter. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now here's the thing. Uh, just a quick thing. If that's all you have, I would oh. say go for it. Oh, yeah. If you don't have anything else, go for it. But if you're going to have an apple with it, then I would say eight is great, and then have your apple in addition to that. Yeah. You guys, don't be afraid of carbohydrates. They're OK. Now, one of my rules of thumb that's not up here that's a little more of an advanced rule of thumb is when the sun goes down, the carbs go down, right? which stinks during the summertime because the sun stays up. Or it's better during the summertime because the sun stays up longer. In December, we're kind of out carbs like at 5 o'clock. <laughs> Right? But um, yeah, that's a, a pretty good general rule is when those, because we don't need carbs to sleep. Carbs boost our energy. They give us the glycogen and glucose for our brain and all that kind of stuff. So we don't really need carbohydrates at night. We just don't utilize them. You can have a little bit, but that should be more of a heavier protein, healthy fats, and veggies meal. Right? So if we're going to have spaghetti and potatoes and all that, just have them earlier in the day. I always suggest having the fruits earlier in the day as well. Um, I always know when, when my dad's on a diet because I go over there and he's got a huge bowl of fruit in front of him at 10 o'clock at night in front of the TV. And I'm like, hold on, let me just calculate this. My brain's going crazy. That's 130 grams of sugar, dad. I'm like, you go to sleep with that, no protein. And that's just insulin cortisol city all night long. <laughs> all right. Edamame as a snack? Edamame? Sure, yeah. Is that good for like but every three hour snack? Sure, yeah. Um, the edamames, um, let's see here. I need to look at the nutritional. There's not really fat in edamames. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm, there's anything wrong with that. We just can't have too much of it at one sitting. Um, but that's, there's a lot of fiber in edamames, a good protein content. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Just be careful with how much salt we're putting on them it, or if there's pre-salt on them. Yeah, that's a great snack for sure. So you guys are going to get quinoa today. You're going to get some sunflower seed butter. What was the other one that you're going to get? Oh, you're going to get the walnuts, almonds, pecans, cut out the peanuts. Not like that's a huge deal, but. Oh, just don't eat them. Yeah, that's one that we just can't eat too much by themselves. Peas. No, that's okay, actually. Yeah, because there's a little, there's the healthy fat and the hummus, which remember, you got to have a protein with that. And hummus is, is not a protein. A lot of people think, oh, hummus is protein. There might be one or two grams of protein in hummus. A lot of people think it's hummus, but, uh, protein, but really it's fat and salt. Yeah. They use a lot of oil and hummus. I know. Yeah. I was like, we'd rather eat protein. 
I'm sorry, I'm just telling you the yeah, facts. Make it a protein, yeah, but here's the deal. Check this out, you guys. You ready for my secret? You guys like Greek yogurt, like plain Greek yogurt? Okay, you can mix it in anything, including hummus. Okay, and then what does it make the hummus all of a sudden? It makes it a protein. Okay. And, and you guys ever, do you ever make guacamole? Yes. Okay, put a few scoops of um, uh, Greek yogurt in it. Plain Greek yogurt, obviously. Yes. You don't want to do the it's strawberry. Really good. That's fine. That's Heck fine. Yeah. yeah. Cottage cheese also. Yes. There we go. See, we can get super creative and just throw them in there. Yes. To Greek yogurt? I know. I knew I was hurting your feelings there. <laughs> There's not. There's not. Yeah, I can do, I can give you a lot of great um, tips on what are some other sources for veggie proteins, but there are no yogurts. And I mean, there are like soy yogurts, but I'm not a huge fan of soy. Yeah. Yeah. For sour cream? Yes. Just use Greek yogurt. Yeah, just read. Yeah, two percent. Don't get don't get the fat free. That's first of all, it's disgusting. Yeah, and, and and second, yeah, second of all, they usually put other things in there to to make up for the no fat. Whether it's more salt or there's more sugar in there. Well, not like the four percent or the the whole. There's like whole Greek yogurt. It's like basically like cream. So yeah, just get the two percent. Yeah. But that not if you're gonna drink cow's milk, for example, get the skim milk. So. Yeah, that's that's how Costco rolls. You get Costco. Yeah, just get two percent, like the two percent fahe, which they have at Sprouts, is really good. Yeah, I can eat that by the spoonful, actually. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. What's your question? What's the best time of the day to exercise? Yeah. Yeah. I say whatever you, whatever you can do, but here's my suggestion for everybody in here, every single soul in this room. Does life get crazy sometimes? Yeah. Do you sometimes skip exercises? Yeah. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. Okay, you're gonna make a promise to yourself to work out five minutes every morning. And guess what five minutes can do? Set the timer and squat for five minutes. Jog in place for five minutes. Get a jump rope and jump for five minutes. Go jog around the block, five minutes, that's it. Because what, is, can everybody do five minutes? If I said, everybody, before you go back, go work out for five minutes. We can all do that. We did almost half of it just with the squat thing right here. Everybody can do five minutes. I can take a break from my desk and do five minutes. I say first thing in the morning, five minutes before you do anything. That way, you feel good about what you've done. And if life gets in the way, life gets crazy, at least you kept that promise to yourself. My coach said that if you, every time you use the bathroom, that if you did 20 squats every single time by the second week, 30, You'll, no one will know you're doing it because you're in the bathroom and they're going to see your feet and your feet aren't moving. And that, that's the best way to squeeze exercise in. And oh, like, so oh, you're in the not, stall. Yeah, so if you... <laughs> what about the guys? Say, I don't have time, but it just takes a minute to do it, you know? And it, yeah. it, it does make a difference. Oh, that's not enough to make a difference, but it makes a difference. No, and it's not just the physical difference that it makes. It's the whole emotional, me mental difference. Yeah. So it's all about keeping those... So if you, to, if you drink a Tony's glass of water, already water clap her head. Head. you're going to use the bathroom at least 15 times. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right, guys, we'll see you on Tuesday night if you can come. Thank you so much.